Sometimes I sit out on my patio in the morning in Alameda, California, and I wait, wait for that moment when I suddenly feel it in my eye, that wonderful sun, and I can see enough light to see that sunrise. I can see these spotlights up here. I can see enough to see that sunrise, and so it's a good text for me because that's one of the few things that I can see. Lift up your eyes. angry at my parents for the blindness thing. I remember being angry at the blindness because people would do things that I couldn't do. I still have dreams of being able to go for limitless amounts of time, riding down the street on a bicycle. Tell you, I've got to stay on a day like today. It's a great, great day just to be alone. There was a time when I guess I was very very bitter about blindness, but not anymore. What made the change, I'm not sure exactly. I began to be able to depend a little bit more on my uh, musical skills. And so success or reward or satisfaction began to come from those places, not from the things I couldn't do, but from the things I could do. I want you to sing right after I sing, okay? Okay? My name is Steve. My name is Steve. Here go. My name is Steve. Okay. I like to walk. I like to walk. I like to talk. Okay, what else do you like to do? I like to talk. Okay. I like to talk. What else do you like to do? I like to. What else do you like to do? I like to sing. I like to clap. I like to clap. Well, let me hear you clap. I like you. I like to clap. I like you. What else? I like you to be here. I like you to be here. I like you to be here. For my film. For my film. I got a call late one night at my house from uh, someone who said, you need to hear this guy who plays the piano and sings and he's blind, could I come out tomorrow to your office and have you meet him and have him play for you? I said, oh, sure. And so the next day he came to Word and then he sat down and played and I began to cry. And I thought to myself, come on, Kurt, you're a big boy. You don't have to do that. And then I went out in the hallway and I called some of the other executives at Word In. I remember Gerald McCracken came in and some of the others, and they reacted the same way to Ken's playing. And that started the whole thing, and oh man, it's been, I've been through lots of things with this person, I can tell you that. So that, that's, those are some of the things I remember. And of course, it's fun to watch him work. And the thing that I really like about him is through all these years, he's remained his creativity and and he sings very, very well. All these things that are so important that make him who he is are very special. Ken and I first met in the Opryland Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee during the 19, mid 70s. Ken playing and singing, and I was conducting for a huge Christian youth rally. I was immediately struck by his enormous talent as a singer, a pianist, and an on-the-spot composer. We later teamed up many times for the Robert Schubert's Crystal Cathedral and the televised Hour of Power. It was always an inspiration and an honor 
to conduct the choir as we joined with Ken as his backup singers. We also love singing his choral compositions, especially the great anthem, Listen to Your Children Pray. Ken also composed an incredibly meaningful song for my wife Sue and me when we were married. Ken's masterful pianistic abilities, his beautiful tenor voice, his compositional talents, his deep passion, and his devout Christian commitment are unequaled. I'm delighted to have the privilege to say a word about my friend Ken Miedema. Let me tell you when we met. His wife, Jane Miedema, was a student in my class at Union Theological Seminary in 1976. It was the early part of the semester. I was describing to the students what the call to ministry could be like. And I had sort of come down to the point where I was saying, hey, Moses, for an example, had this experience of a bush burning. It was, and you know, calling him by name, etc. And so I was trying my best to describe what that call was like. But on that day, Jane's husband had come to the class with her. And at the end of my effort to describe the call of Moses, this fellow said, uh, uh, Sir, I think I could explain uh, what that means. And it just so happens that in that classroom, there was a piano. So somebody helped Ken get to the uh, piano. And he sat down. And this is what he did. And started singing, Oh Moses, way back there in the wilderness. Way back there in the wilderness. It blew my mind. I had never met Ken Beatema. I get to meet him in my classroom where he takes over my class. And so now Forbes has tried to tell you what the call is like. But I want to tell you in music what the call of Moses is like. Of course, in the archives will be found Moses, words of music by Ken Beatema. And what a piece of music it is. That's Ken. The next thing I want to mention about Ken is Ken is, was also what I call a, uh, a musical midwife. Yeah, that's it, a maeutic. Oh, wherever Ken Miedema's music is, there's life, there's hope. And tell truth, it's gonna be a whole lot of joy. Oh, how blessed is the institution that is a repository of the rich resources of that man's mind and spirit. I met Ken shortly after I graduated from seminary in 1980. He was first introduced to me as the only person besides myself that a mutual friend of ours knew as a person who personally ground their own coffee every morning. Anyone knows, Ken knows that he loves his coffee. My second memory of Ken was when our San Francisco Church's music director asked him to play a new song for me. Bob said, Tom is really going to love this song. The song was Kingdom in the Streets, and Bob was right. I loved it. Yes, it's a long night, and the prince is in the streets tonight. There's a sense in which it transformed my life. It was that song that started the two of us on an intermittent road of collaborative work that has lasted for nearly 40 years. It began when I accompanied Ken to Los Angeles for the mixing sessions for Kingdom in the Streets, followed by my shooting the cover for that album on Hate Street, just around the corner from our house in San Francisco. 
Along the way, I had the great good fortune to produce 11 albums with Ken, beginning with Songs from a Long Winter's Night in 1982, and ending this past year with a soundtrack for my documentary film Raven Awakens. This past year, after we had not worked together for a very long time, I sent out an urgent SOS to Ken for help on a soundtrack for my film. He instantly and enthusiastically volunteered, and when we got back in the studio together after over 20 years apart, it was like no time had passed. And that's Ken. Unbelievably gifted, consummately talented, always true, and perpetually present. I am deeply blessed to call him my friend. Do you realize we've been friends for almost 40 years? Now this can prove that you have aged well and I have just aged. But during those 40 years, we've had a lot of fun, haven't we? I'll never forget the time you said, hey, I have to sing in Hawaii. I'd like to go surfing. And I said, okay, I hope you can do it. And I bought a ticket secretly and sat behind you on the plane. And then we made quite a disturbance when you realized that I was there. And then I got you to Hawaii. And would you believe you actually surfed? Of course, you went the wrong way, towards the waves, instead of on the waves. But you did well. The time I remember most, I think, was in London. When one almost Christmas Eve, we walked through the streets of London. We walked past a pub, into the pub had one of those boiled eggs and a beer and then went out and listened to the Salvation Army band playing. And I said, where are you singing tonight, Ken? He said, well, follow me. The next thing I knew, Ken was up on that stage singing Christmas carols by himself. Then slowly, the curtains opened to reveal this huge choir that sang with him for the rest of the concert. You're full of surprises. You constantly, constantly fool me with the kind of poetry you can write. First time I heard you sing, if this is not a place where tears are understood, where can I go to cry? If this is not a place where the spirit can take wing, where can I go to fly? I was pastoring a church downtown and I was miserable. And you sang that church to about, that song to about 800 people in the church that Sunday night and what a blessing you were. Maybe the happiest memory I have is when I was speaking for a banquet at Fuller Seminary for the faculty and staff and students. And I described a friendship I had with Jim Morgan, one of the young professors who had just died, who come, came to me every morning about 10 o'clock and said, hey Mel, it's time for coffee. And I'd say, no, I'm groaning papers. I don't have enough time for coffee. He said, come on, Mel, come on. He finally convinced me. And one day after he died, I realized those coffee times were so important to me when I finished the speech, you got up and sang, it's 10 a.m., it's coffee time again. So from here till quarter after, it's a time for love and laughter. Hello, friend, it's coffee time again. I don't know if you've blessed as many people as you have blessed me, but thank you, man. My memories will always be happy and grateful. So this is about what Ken and I did together. We called it Let Justice Roll. Here's the poster. <laughs> These are all over the place. And so this is me, Jim Wallace, and Ken Miedema. And we traveled together. And I'd preach, and Ken would sing. Uh, I would tell a little story, a part of a sermon, and he would compose a song in response to what I'd said, or the moments, or the people who were there. And it was an amazing time. City after city, night after night. We would bring people together in all of these towns and very diverse groups of people. And it was really wonderful. I miss it to this day. We would talk about how to live your faith, how to make your faith count, how your faith could make a difference in the world. We would sing and live and act our way to justice. That's what faith can do. So these were powerful moments in our lives and the life of these cities. I remember one of our tours, the last night was at Duke. And so there we are in the Duke Chapel, this very classic Gothic place. We filled the place, a wonderful night. And after we're done, we went out for a burger and came back. And, and I remember we all began to sing. Beverly sang the Holy City. Beverly has a wonderful voice. Uh, Beverly Van Millen, if we didn't have her on the team, 
we had never got to the next city. <laughs> and she ran the whole thing and, and sort of told us what we should do. I missed that terribly. Ken did Gregorian chants. And I decided to sing a song that I had sung my only solo in my life at the spring concert in my high school. I was in the choir. I sang Maria. I just met a girl named Maria. Now imagine the Holy City, Gregorian chant, and Maria all echoing throughout Duke Chapel. It was, of course, just beautiful. Then we moved the equipment outside. I was carrying Ken's keyboard. And on the steps of the chapel is this kid. It's midnight. He's stoned out of his mind. And he says, was that you guys in there? Uh, I said, yeah, that was us. He said, wow, I thought it was monks on speed. Monks on speed. Well, Ken and I kind of liked that. And he sang a song about it. I think he wrote a song. I have never experienced the creativity uh, in a musician like Ken Miedema. How he could take what was happening in the world, uh, what I was preaching, what was in the minds and hearts of those people, and put it to music. And it was an amazing time of art and faith and, and action, as we called people to action. Let justice roll. We were trying to roll down like waters, like Amos said, and justice like an ever-flowing stream. Thanks, Ken, Beverly. I miss those nights, those days, those weeks terribly. And I'm thrilled to have been a part of this with you. Let justice roll. We were in, we were in Jos, Nigeria, Nigeria, yep. mm -hmm. and uh, I've gone on a number of trips to, to Nigeria, but this one was the best. Uh, we gave away wheelchairs. You uh, you had a concert at uh, all of our locations, and um, and we were we were in the city of Wase, and we were uh, we were hosted by the Emir of Wase. <laughs> And, uh, and before the emir came, it was, it was like out of National Geographics. <laughs> <laughs> These horses that were decorated, the riders that were decorated, and they come, uh, not marching, charging into the mm -hmm. courtyard mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the palace. Mm -hmm. and, and then we went in, and, and actually you sang there as yes, well. Yes, and, yes. And, 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 the, and, and one of the emir's leaders was moved to tears. We have come with the gift of the wheelchair. We have come with the gift of a song. We are sisters and brothers gathered together and may peace live among us all oh, so long. Dun, 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 dun. When Ken Miedema called and asked me to be part of Interlude, I never even hesitated. Part of it was because of my appreciation of his work, but I loved the vision that musicians in mid-career would have a chance to come, to rest, to renew themselves, and to find a way to return and remember their original call in music. But I still had no idea how powerful the experience would be. It has been, since the start, surprising. It has been exciting. It has been inspiring just to touch the hearts of people who bring music into the world but then to be touched by their hearts can thank you for the experience it's very difficult for us to express um, how much you have meant to us and enriched our lives both your music and especially your friendship this many years and we found ourselves wishing uh, if we were asked to do so, that we could write a song or commission somebody to write a song and not being able to write a song ourselves and not being able to afford, you know, somebody to write a fantastic song. We thought, you know, the one person we wish that could write a song to express our feelings would be you. So uh, we'll send some money to Briar Patch Music. And if you could write a song about how much we love you and appreciate you, we would so um be grateful for that so here's some place to start here are three pitches and three words let's see troubadour friendship kumquat good luck with that hi my name is heidi hagstrom i was introduced to Midima magic when i was in college 
I used his music for some of the worship that I was responsible for leading. I followed Ken from afar, paying attention to his new recordings and his new music. And then finally, in the year 2000, I was able to hire him to be part of the 2000 ELCA Youth Gathering. At the time, we had a germ of an idea, and Ken was able to help us out of his generosity and out of his deep wisdom to put flesh on our germ of an idea, and we created something that was quite special. Ken, you created a killer song also. And then Ken, over the years, became a Lutheran rock star because of his participation in the youth gatherings. Do you remember when you even came down a zip line at the Georgia Dome and people bought it? People thought you really did it. Well, one of the greatest moments in my life then was when Ken invited me to sing with him on a cantata that he had written called The Weaver. You have identified the deep God that resides in me, and you do that for all people. And the God that you know is the God that I want to know, the God of only love and grace. You pull that out of people. You light up their lives with the truth of what's within them. You are an amazing man. You are a gifted soul. And I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to be part of your life. I'm Robert Reister, and as owner and chief engineer of Fast Tracks Recording Studio, I've had the pleasure of working with Ken Minema on many of his CDs over the last 30 years. Ken is a consummate professional whose extraordinary talents and gifts are only superseded by his generosity and kindness. I can remember many years ago, Ken, you wanted your daughter to experience what went into making a professional recording. So you flew her out here for a few days while we were working on one of your CDs. After a morning of tracking, we wanted some lunch, and I thought it'd be kind of fun if we took the Corvette. So I popped the top out, and the three of us piled in. Now, since there's only two seats, your daughter Rachel had to sit on your lap. We pulled out of the driveway, and just as I was about to hit third gear, I looked behind me, and I saw red and blue flashers. We were getting pulled over. The officer came up and asked me if I knew how fast we were going, and of course I told him, well, the speed limit, officer, 45. And then he told me, well, he said, I was doing 70 and you guys were pulling away from me. There we were. Three people in a two-seat sports car, top off, not wearing our seat belts, Rachel sitting in your lap, her head sticking out about a foot above the windshield. I thought they were going to impound the car and I was going to go to jail. And then you took over. You started telling the officer how we were working on your new CD. Perhaps it was the combination of your silver tongue or your celebrity, or how you asked the officer his name so he could give him special thanks on the liner notes of the CD. Whatever the reason, that was the only time I've ever been able to escape a ticket, with only a warning telling us to watch our speed. Ken, you can ride with me anytime. For generations, your music has touched and inspired people worldwide, and will continue to do so for generations to come. I am proud to be able to be a small part of that. And I'm blessed to have been able to work with you all these years, Ken, and to call you my friend. at last the church that you love won't survive make up a song when you wake one more day and you're glad that you're simply alive 
sing when your family has made it to the rain and you're watching your grandchildren thrive. Make up a song, get yourself together and sing. Make up a song for the friends and companions who are standing right here by your side. For the questions you have not yet answered For the things that you have not yet tried Make up a song because the audience waits To be taken on that musical ride Make up a song, jump on this moment and sing Right and loud when you're laughing Sing through your tears when you're crying Sing on the ground when you're crawling Sing in the sky when you're flying Sing in the days of your living Make up a song for the night of your dying Make up a song, stand tall and be deep and sing Strangers turn to friends From birth until death and with every last breath Let the music never end Let the song go on and on Through the night until the dawn Sing your joys and your tears and your hopes and your fears Let the song go on and on and on Let the song go on and on song go on and on and on Let the song go on and on and on Alleluia 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 That piano really jumped around. It was flaming hot. I'm sure it'll take 24 hours for it to cool down. What a performer. It was wonderful. He only gets better. This is my third time when he's been in our city, National Bureau, Ohio. And I told him, I didn't know if his singing or his music I enjoyed the most. Both of them just upset off the chain. It was wonderful. I've sung Ken Medina's music all over the world because I taught for the military for, 30, for 40 years in Germany, on the island of Sicily, in England, and in, uh, oh, where else? Germany, England, uh, Okinawa. Okinawa. Wow. Okinawa. Wow. Started off on Okinawa. I've loved every minute of it and would betray having sung Ken Medina music. Oh, thank you. Thank you.